appreciate it, uh, Minister. Good to good to see you again. Uh, has your government conducted an analysis on job losses or growth due to the clean fuel standards? Uh, I think it's important to think about what the clean fuel standard is. It's about actually reducing the carbon content of our fuels and creating opportunities for farmers and companies that produce renewable fuels, encouraging investments in energy efficiency to save can Canadians money. But certainly to your question, um, as we bring forward the uh, the clean fuel standard to CG1, to, to Gazette 1, we certainly will be providing a detailed cost benefit analysis. So you haven't done it up to this date though, is, am I correct in saying that? As I say, as we move forward to CG1, and we've said that will happen this fall, we will be providing a, a detailed cost-benefit analysis. Sorry, Minister, in your, uh, your announcement on September 11th, 2020, you said it will, and I quote, create jobs in farming, clean tech, and zero emissions vehicles. So can you not tell us right now how, that, how the clean fuel standards will do that? Well, absolutely. It's going to it's going to drive demand for biofuels, and, and just like the renewable fuel standard does, uh, it's going to incent uh, investments in energy efficiency and carbon capture and sequestration and in a whole range of different technologies. It's going to boost the clean technology sector. It will incent deployment of, of zero electric vehicles, and you will see that when uh, when it's out for uh, for public comment. Um, but it absolutely Minister, is a key driver this, for Minister. economic development and green economic development going Minister. forward. I hear, I hear that, Minister. You, you can say that. Uh, however, how come you can't give us the exact number of job projections that uh, this will create, either job growth or job losses? Well, as I say, we are going to be, be bringing this forward to CG1 in the near term, and you will see a detailed cost-benefit analysis. So stay tuned. So what will the added cost be for farmers to dry their grain, to heat their barns, to ship their goods by truck or rail, and for any other fuel use? As I say, uh, the focus of this is on decarbonizing our fuels. It's a critical part of, of a climate plan. It's 30 megatons in reductions. Um, I would hazard a guess that if, if you take out a price on pollution and, uh, and take out a clean fuel standard, which your party opposes both of, you are going to have a very interesting time trying to meet your commitment to meet the Paris targets. But I would say that it will be done in a cost-effective way. In the same way that alarmists said that when we took lead out of gasoline or we were going to ban chlorofluorocarbons to save the ozone layer, that it was going to cause economic catastrophe, I will tell you that this, this uh, measure will drive innovation and it will be, be implemented in a manner that is fully cost-effective. Minister, you've had five years to tell us, though, how many jobs this is going to, in my opinion, lose, uh, particularly in my province and in Alberta. So I look forward to your detailed analysis, and I, I hope it comes uh, uh, soon, because, again, there's many, many uh, Canadians, uh, particularly Albertans, who are very worried about uh, what the clean fuel standards uh, means. Well, well Alberta sure has I'll a lot to gain, a lot to gain my, economically uh, through this, to, uh, as does Saskatchewan, Goyen, which, is, which was the province in which I grew up. Biofuels can be produced very easily on the prairies. It's a great place to do that. A lot of the technology that we're talking about actually will be driven uh, through the prairies and through British Columbia. Um, there are enormous economic opportunities for Alberta in this, and, and I look forward to working with, uh, with companies and with entrepreneurs and with the province of Alberta to ensure that that happens.